everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking time out of your day to tune in to, to watch me and listen to what I have to say. Uh, as promised, I'm giving the people what they asked for. And uh, what the people asked for was more videos that had to do with, with Kali Linux. So giving the people what they want, more videos on Kali Linux. In the previous video, we set up Metasploitable 2 inside of VirtualBox. We made sure that we had everything dialed in correctly uh, as far as networking goes on the virtual interfaces so that our Kali Linux machine running inside of VirtualBox could communicate with the Metasploitable 2 machine. And we did a basic Nmap scan and here we are. So we have uh, Using Nmap, we, we did a basic scan and we were able to determine that this is the IP address of the machine and it also gave us a bunch of uh, open ports with services running on them. Now we're going to do a little bit more with Nmap. Even though that seemed like it got probably most of, if not all of, what we will be taking a look at, I don't know for sure because I'm, I'm pretty much doing this in real time. So let's go ahead and uh, rerun uh, Nmap. And paste in that IP address of the Metasploitable 2 box. Now we're gonna run Nmap with a dash P and a zero dash 65535. This command will scan every TCP port on the machine. Might take a little bit of time, depending on the resources of your system. Okay, so that has finished. Uh, taking a quick glance at it, it looks like we pretty much have the same results. I, I don't know if there's anything extra on here or not. So we have quite a, quite a bit of services that are running on these open ports. Services such as SSH running on port 22, Telnet running on port 23, HTTP on port 80, MySQL on port 3306, uh, VNC on 5900, etc., and so forth. Uh, nearly every one of these listening services actually provides a remote entry point into the system. So we're gonna take a look at one of those vectors. All right, so the first attack vector that we're gonna take a look at is actually gonna be the very first service that shows up on this scan, and that is the FTP service that is running on port 21. Uh, if you don't know, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It is something that is uh, typically used for transferring files. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna perform another scan, and uh, that's gonna be to try to get a little bit more information back. I wanna see if Nmap will actually give me back information pertaining to this FTP uh, server. I wanna get some information back on, on what version of FTP that it is running. So I'm gonna rerun Nmap with dash S capital V, and that will give me back information pertaining to the version of certain services that, that may be running on the system. Okay, so that scan has completed and we have basically the same list but the addition is that we now have uh, information over here on the on the version of these uh, protocols or services that are running so we see that for FTP it is running uh, FS VTPD version 2.3.4 and this is obviously going to be uh, very important uh, this is an outdated a version of FTP so as you can imagine it, it most likely has um, some, some vulnerabilities inside of it. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I could do this. I'm going to open up another terminal emulator. We should have search exploit installed on the system. If I do a what is on search exploit we get back that it is an exploit database archive search. This basically allows you to search exploit 
databases um, for potential exploits from the command line. So I'm going to go ahead and just run search exploit on FTP and see what we get back. We get we get back quite a bit of information. We're obviously looking for things related to Linux. Tell you what, let's see if um, let's see if we can just. Uh, rerun that and then pipe that into grep. Now grep for anything that has Linux in it. Try to narrow this down a little bit. And remember, we were dealing with a version 2.3.4. Uh, let me go ahead and try this a different way. Instead of grepping for Linux, let me just grep for 2.3.4. Okay, there we go. All right, so we do get some hits back. Uh, so once again, just to narrow it down, I'm searching for anything related to FTP in the exploit database using Searchploit from the command line. I'm piping that into grep, and I'm grepping specifically for version 2.3.4 because that's the version that is running on this box. We do get back some hits. Uh, so one of them is right here. So, so basically, there is a Metasploit module that allows us backdoor command execution into this version of FTP. Uh, so that's what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to use Metasploit uh, to get backdoor access into the box. Metasploit is installed on Kali Linux by default. It's also referred to as the Metasploit framework. It's a framework for exploit development and vulnerability research that comes straight from the APT repositories. Uh, if I wanted to go a little bit further, I could do APT info and paste in Metasploit framework and we'll get back a description. Uh, the Metasploit framework is an open source platform that supports vulnerability research, exploit development, and the creation of custom security tools. As I said, it is pre-installed on Kali Linux. To start it up, we simply type msf console. That will start up Metasploit for us. We get some cool ASCII art. And it tells you how many exploits the current version has as well as payloads, encoders, NOPs, invasion, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, so we are dropped into the Metasploit prompt, as you can see right there. I'll go ahead and clear the screen. Now, from inside of Metasploit, we can also search for exploits by typing search, and I will once again search for anything related to FTP. We can do it that way. I should also be able to search for 2.3.4 and we do get back a hit on that so this is what we're this is what we are looking for this is the exploit this is backdoor command execution on version 2.3.4 and that is what we are going to use all right so the, the line that is right above this one, this is the actual exploit. Uh, it has a number of five, so we could access it by uh, referencing five, or we can just give it the, the actual full path here. But th this is the exploit that we are looking for. So I'm actually just gonna copy that. I'm going to type use and then I'm going to paste in that exploit and hit enter. All right, so now we basically have, uh, for lack of, of, of better terminology, we have entered into the directory of that exploit or we have enabled uh, the ability to work specifically with this exploit. I'm sure, there's probably a better way of explaining that, but that's, that's what I have. All right, so from this point, we should be able to pull up the options by typing options. 
Uh, surely there are gonna be options that we have to set. There typically always are. Uh, none of these exploits and Metasploit work without setting something in the options. And I believe we can also do show options and uh, you pretty much get the same thing. So if you, if you look at the module options, you have the name on the left hand side and then you see we have this section that says required when we have the description for what it is. So underneath required, if it says no, that means you don't have to set it. If it says yes, in order for it to work, you do have to set it. So uh, the two things that we need to set potentially are the R hosts and the R port. The R port has actually already been set for us unless it's different because sometimes people do try to use certain evasion tactics, uh, what, what would they call that, security by obscurity, and they will change the port number that a service runs on, but we saw that this was running on port 21, uh, so we don't need to fiddle with this. So the only thing that we need to change is the parameter for the R host. The R host is basically the IP address for the target host, so that's going to be the IP address for the Metasploitable 2 box. So if we open up that other terminal, uh, the IP address for that box is right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. It will probably be different for you. So just find the IP address and copy that. Head back over to Metasploit. And we are going to use the set sub command. And we are gonna set the R hosts parameter to that IP address of the box. And hit enter. All right, so you can see that it did it did properly set it. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and run show options again. And now you see that it has been set. So that's it. That's that's all we need to do. And uh, from here to actually run the exploit, we type exploit. So it has started the exploit, and it has found a shell. So we have obtained a shell on, on the uh, box. So once it shows you that you uh, have a command shell session open, you, you are not gonna see any command prompt. You're not gonna see anything like you typically would on a Linux system that's letting you know you've been dropped into the shell. Just go ahead and try to type a command such as ls and if you see something pop up, then you know that you, you are now you're now inside the device, you have a shell on the device. So if I run the ls command, you see I'm getting the uh, root file system. If I run the pwd command, it's telling me I'm in the root directory. If I run uh, w, you know, basic Linux commands that we can run at this point. I can run uname-a and get uh, versioning information back on the kernel. So if I run ls, we have the root directory. If I run pwd, it'll print the working directory. We are in the root directory. If I run the date command, I'll get today's date as of the recording of this video. So I should be able to cat out the password file. Here are all of the users on, on this system. We can see the ones that actually have shells. A few of them, quite a few of them actually have shells. Quite a few of them actually have shells. All right, so the whole point is that uh, using this exploit, we have been able to obtain shell access onto the device, and that is simply because it's running an outdated, insecure version of an FTP server, uh, one which has a backdoor built into it that we are able to access simply by running a Metasploit module. Pretty straightforward. Uh, from this point, obviously, there's so many things that we could do uh, but it's kind of out of the scope for what I'm trying to present in this video. The whole point was just to lay the groundwork, show you a basic methodology. We use Nmap to, to scan the box, get the, the IP address, see what services and what, uh, what open ports were, were on the box, and then go a little bit further, get versioning information. We got the version information specifically for the FTP server, determined that it did have 
an exploit available for it using Certsploit. We then uh, used Metasploit to actually gain access to the box. I'm gonna leave it at this point and in the next video, we will continue to progress and explore different ways that we can uh, hack into this box via back doors, insecure uh, services, etc., and so forth. I'm gonna keep the videos coming on Kali Linux because that is what people want to see the most. And this channel for me, it's not, it's not just my channel. For me, it's, it's, it's in part, it's our channel. So you guys do have an input in the things that happen on this channel. So we're gonna keep the videos coming on Kali Linux. As always, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. That is the easiest thing that you can do to support what I'm doing. It costs you nothing. If you are not subscribed, please stop, stop what you are doing right now and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.